Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, you all. Welcome. I'm going to give about 30 to 60 seconds to wait on a few people. Welcome, 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 welcome. Guys, we're going to work up, wait about 30 to 60 seconds before we get into worship. Then we're going to go straight into the Word of God. I'm so excited on what God's going to do in these few moments that we have together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your presence, Lord. Oh, God, let this night be life-changing for all of us, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to get started in just a few moments. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to start off with worship. Thank you, Jesus. If you know the song, that you can sing along if you know the song. Deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name, and you deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship. As I bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name, for you are great, you do miracles. So great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Oh, there is no. Sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, 
Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Sing that one more time before we get into the word of God. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we pray that you will bless this opportunity, bless this time with us together. God, as we embark upon the word of God, as we begin to talk about the word and discuss how we can be on your side, Father, and get away from the world and be on God's side and serve you wholeheartedly, Father. Lord God, we pray that you would bless this time, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Let people feel your presence, God. Let lives be changed. Let people encounter you, Father, in these few moments that we have together, God, as we discuss, as we embark upon your great word, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Um, So we're going to jump right into the word of God. Um, I first want to do say, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you are able to do that at Talking With Nate on YouTube. Um, that's youtube.com slash Talking With Nate. That's N-A-T-E, Talking With Nate. And um, tonight I want to talk to you from this topic. There is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. You can't have the world and you can't have God at the same time. We have to choose, especially living in the times that we're living in, we have to choose to be on God's side. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight is um, there is no middle ground. Choose who you're going to serve all the days of your life. And um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the word of God. If you have your Bible, you can go with me together um, with me and to um, go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. Um, excuse me, starting at verse 15 through 16. And um, if you don't have your Bible, you are, a- you are able to read these scriptures on your own time. Make sure that you go over these scriptures and meditate upon the word of God. That is how we get the word of God deep down on the inside of us. We're able um, to get the word of God down on the inside of our hearts by meditating, by meditating deeply upon the word of God. And um, with that being said, let's start at Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 15. Um, It says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. You're not necessarily all the way in the world. You're not necessarily all the way on God's side. And it says, I would rather you be cold or hot. Verse 16 says, so then because you are lukewarm, you are halfway, you are half hearted with God. He says, now this is the words of Jesus Christ in the word of God. He says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. I will, I will reject you because you have chosen to be half-hearted me, to be half-hearted with me. What is God saying? He's saying that if you don't choose to go all the way with him at the end of, at the end, at the end of, at the end of time or when your time comes, the Lord will reject you. 
No matter who you are, that doesn't matter how nice you are. No matter, you know, it doesn't matter how much, how, how, how educated you are. None of that matters to God. All that matters to God is that I line my, my life up with the word of God. Whatever God has demanded, whatever God has commanded in his word for me to do, I'm commanded to live all the way on God's side. That's what I've been called to do. I haven't been, I haven't been called to, 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 to serve Satan, the, the, the kingdom of Satan, and also serve the kingdom of God. I can't do that. God, the Bible, the, Bible, the Bible talks about that God is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. You have a choice. We have a decision that we have to make in these last hours that we're living in. To serve God wholeheartedly, going all the way with God, totally surrendering my life to Jesus Christ. Surrendering my life to God. Surrendering my life to the Holy Spirit. I'm depending on Christ. I'm looking to him. He's why I'm living. He's why I'm breathing. I'm living this life. God has me on earth to serve him all the days of my life. This is what I've been called to do. This is what you have been called to do. It's to serve God. And so let's read that verse again. Then we're going to move on to something else. It says, I know your works. In other words, God is not guessing. He knows everything about us. Everything, everything that you think, everything that's in your heart, who you are, everything that you're dealing with, everything that you're facing. He knows all your weaknesses. He's no, he knows all your struggles. Everything about you. The Bible says that Jesus says to one of the churches in the in the book of Revelation, he says, I know your works. I know your motives. I know your heart. That you are neither no, that you are neither cold nor hot. But it is God's desire for us. To be on fire for God, to serve God wholeheartedly, to 100% surrender my life all the way to Christ. I say no to the world. I say no to the flesh. I say no to perversion. I say no to sin. Anything that is not like God, it is my job. I've been commanded by God to say no to sin. That I can bring pleasure to him. That I can serve him wholeheartedly. That I can, that I can walk in the true fear of God. We're going to talk also mention the fear of God. The fear of God helps us to be on fire for God. The fear of God, the reverencing God, respecting God, honoring God, a part of honoring God, a part of respecting him is being on fire for him. Totally making a decision that I'm going to serve God wholeheartedly. I'm not going to have one world, one foot in the world and one foot out, you know, in, in, you know, in church on Sundays. We shout and dance, we buck and shout, we do all these different things. And then Monday through Friday, we want to live like the world. We can't go to heaven like that. We can't serve God like that wholeheartedly. No, he wants all of me. No, I start my day off with God. I end with God. Throughout the day, I, 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 I'm with God. Everything that I do has and must involve Jesus. It's all about him. And this is the life that God has called us to live. Again, there is no middle ground with God. You must choose who you're going to serve. There is no middle ground with God. And with that being said, let's go to the next scripture. Joshua chapter 24. The Bible talks about how we have a choice. God gives every man, every human being, he gives us a choice to either choose the world or either choose him. Can't have both. The Bible says you can't have, you can't serve two masters. I can't serve Satan and Jesus at the same time. I can't do that. I have heart. It is no heart at all for God. A half-hearted is, is, is unacceptable unto God. And so with that being said, let's go to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 through 17. It says, and if it seem evil, if it's undesirable unto you to serve the living God, to serve the Lord. What does it mean to serve God? That means to perform duties. What are my duties to that I'm supposed to perform if I want to serve God? Those duties are to be in prayer, number one. I must be in the presence of God. If you're going to serve God wholeheartedly, you have to be in the presence of God. You cannot say that you serve God and you don't never spend time in the presence of the, in the, presence of the Lord. You can't say that I, that I serve God wholeheartedly. He has my heart. He has my attention. All these different kind of things and you don't get in God's presence. You're not in your Bible. How can you say you know God and you don't even open your Bible? But we can eat. We can sleep. We can be on Facebook. We can be on Instagram. We can do all these different things and say that we love God. That is incorrect. That is not the definition of serving God. No, I put him first. In everything that I do, I put him first. 
I serve him. I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the word. I also consecrate. I fast. At times I put my plate down to spend time with God. To be able to, uh, to get rid of all the structures around me. That I'm able to hear clearly, more clearly the voice of God speak to me. That I can fulfill his will, his purpose. I'm in communion with him. I'm in connection with God. That, that is what it means to serve God wholeheartedly. So the verse says, and if it seem evil to you to do that. He says, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. He says, choose. There's a choice that has to be made. Choose you this day. Whom you will serve, whether the gods which, which your father served. In the Bible times, they serve different gods. He said, whether well, you're going to serve that, serve that God. He says, we're on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. You can serve all these other gods, but you have a choice to serve them or serve the true and living God that gives us breath, that gives me life. That has mercy on me when I mess up, when I fall short of the glory of God. No, it is God that extends great mercy unto us to live for him. Every day of my life is to live for Christ. Every day I'm getting up, I'm striving for perfection. He never told me to be perfect. He told me to strive to enter in into the straight gate. I'm striving to be like Jesus. I'm, every day I'm striving to be in his presence. You think I feel like praying every day? You think I feel like reading my Bible every day? You think I like fasting, not eating? Saying no to the flesh. No. It doesn't supposed to feel good. That's the whole point of, of, of dying to self. That I may serve him. It's what pleases the father. It's what pleases God that sits high. And looks low. That has all power. All authority. All dominion. In the earth. And in my life. My life is to serve him wholeheartedly. That's what I've been called to do. That's what we have been called to do. In the verse says. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua said that we will serve God in my house. He has made the decision, Joshua, who wrote the book of Joshua. He said that I have made a decision that for my house, for my children, we're going to make sure that we start off with God. We're going to honor God. We're going to serve him. I start my life off with Jesus. When I roll up out of my bed, you know what I do? I start off in God's presence as much as I know how to do. Some days I fail. <laughs> Some days I succeed, but every single day, God, he, he gives me credit for putting forth effort to spend time with him, to put him first. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, it says, seek ye first. He, God wants to be priority in our lives. Again, there is no middle ground. You can't have both. You have to choose because when you stand before God, you're going to give an account. No matter how much success you had on the earth, if he wasn't first in your life, if he wasn't the one that you chose to serve, you're going to give an account for that. I'm going to give an account. That's why we must get our lives aligned with God now so that when I stand before him, my life can be acceptable unto Jesus. My life can be acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service, which is our reasonable service. In verse 16 says, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. God forbid if we choose other, other gods over the, over the true and living God, over Jesus. No, they're saying that we don't want to make that mistake. We don't want to, we, we don't want to reject Christ. That's who I want to serve. And verse 17 says, for the Lord our God, he it is who brought us out of Egypt. Brought us out of, out of our father's land of Egypt. The, Egypt was a place of bondage. God has brought us so, from so much. Why wouldn't I want to serve God? Why wouldn't I want to be totally committed to God? Why, why wouldn't I want to choose him? When he has delivered me, set me free. He has hit our bodies. He has set us free from so much bondage, sin, depression, sadness, sickness, disease, perversion. Fornication, lying, whatever, whatever your weakness is or whatever your, your weakness was. And he's still doing things in our lives. Because of that, because of our encounter with Christ, I choose to serve him. I choose to serve him wholeheartedly. In verse, the, the rest of verse 17 says, 
For the Lord our God, he it is, he it is who brought us out, out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight. We have seen God do great things in our, in our vision. We have seen God do great things in our lives. Even in our family members' lives. And the Bible says, and preserve. God preserved them. What does that mean? He protected them. God has been protecting us from this coronavirus. He's been protecting us from any harm or danger, any other sicknesses and diseases. When we're, when we're driving in the car, who do you think that has been, protect, has been protecting us? It is Jesus. It is God who sits high and looks slow. It's all about him. This is why we serve him. This is why we should choose to go wholeheartedly with God. And whatever your weakness is, whatever is keeping you from totally yielding your life to Christ, God can help you. If you want to have, if you, if you want to be free, if you want to be delivered by the power of God, he can set you free. But it's, it is your choice. It is my choice. If I want to be free, God can set me free. If I want to be bound, he'll let me be bound. But it's totally up to me. It's totally up to you. Every man will give an account for their life. Everything that you've said, everything that you've done, you will give an account before God. And then the verse says, us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through we passed. Through whom we pass. So when they were going out of Egypt and traveling to get to the destination where Christ wanted them or where God wanted them, the Bible says that God protected them all the way to the land of to the to the promised land, all the way where God had them to be. God has protected us all of this time through all the mess, through all the chaos that we have been through, through all the mistakes that we have made. The Bible says He has protected us through all of that. He has given us the victory. He has given us the victory. We can be victorious because of what he's done through his mercy. And because of that, that is why I serve him wholeheartedly. That is why I walk in the fear of God. Everything that you do, make sure that you fear God. Don't play games with the house of God. Don't play games with this book. This book is nothing to be played with. You take God seriously. Take God at his word. Whatever he, he, he has promised you. Take God at his word. He's true. <laughs> this is why, again, this is why we serve him. And with that being said, let me say this. Talk is cheap. You can talk all day long. Oh, I love God. Oh, I serve God. Oh, I love God so much. Oh, I go to church every Sunday. But if you're not truly dedicated behind the scenes where nobody can't see anything, if you're not truly surrendered to Christ behind closed doors, when nobody can't see nothing, that's the true you. That's the one that's God. That's the, that's the you that God is going to judge. But when nobody is around, how is Jr. living his life? How is Nathaniel living my life? Have I been in my word? Have I been overcoming lust? Have I been overcoming perversion? Have I been overcoming, overcoming things that I know that, is, that isn't of God? At the end of the day, that's the real me. <laughs> that's the one that God sees. That's the one that God is going to judge. The Bible makes it very clear that it is the heart of man that God will judge. Not what we do on the outside. The Bible talks about how, how, how many people in the Bible, how they had a form of godliness. They looked godly on the outside. But on the inside, they were wicked. On the inside, they didn't love God all the way. On the inside, they was not committed. They, was, they, couldn't, they couldn't discern. Certain things, they wasn't able to hear the voice of God. They was not close to him because they had a form of godliness on the outside, but the heart was not wholeheartedly towards Christ. The Bible says, and then the Bible says that they denied the power thereof. They denied, they were powerless. They denied the power of God because the same power that could have set them free if they wanted to be wholeheartedly. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, is the same power that will live in your life and help you to live the life that God has called you to live. Again, there is no middle ground. If you choose to serve him, <laughs> if you choose to serve Christ, he will help you. You can't do this in your own power, your own strength, your own ability. No, it's not about me. It's his grace. 
It's his power. It's his authority that he's given me as a believer that I can take a hold to, to walk in that power to live a clean, holy life before God. The Bible says, the Bible says, be holy for I am holy. God is a holy God. You cannot live like the world and serve him at the same time. He said that I am holy. What does it mean to be holy? That means that I'm separate from the world. I can't can't listen to secular music. I can't fornicate. I can't can't be doing, I can't be dressing like the world. And you call yourself a woman woman of God. You call yourself a man of God. You can't dress like the world and say that you love God. I must look different. He says, be ye holy for I'm holy. What is it, what again, what does it mean to be holy? That means to be separate from what the world is doing. And come all the way on God's side. And whatever God does, I do. Whatever God don't do, I don't do. What I, mean, I, I don't do. If he does it, I do it. If he don't, I don't. It's all him. But we must be in connection with God. Totally surrendered to him. That I'm able to hear the voice of God. And walk out what he's called me to walk out. And if you, let me, let me just stop right here. If you're falling short. In your walk with God. <laughs> If you're falling short, uh, 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 if you're having certain weaknesses, certain struggles that people can't see, it don't matter what people see, it don't matter what people think about you, you lay that stuff on the altar. Let God consume that. Let him fill you with his presence. <laughs> let him fill you with, your, with, with, let him wash you in the blood of Jesus. I don't care how many times that you've messed up. You spend time in the presence of God. Say, Lord, forgive me for messing up. Forgive me for thinking like that. Lord, give me the mind of Christ. Lord, forgive me for having wicked motives in my heart that nobody can see. But I know what I'm desiring in me is not of God. Lord, help me. God, give me grace to live this life that you've called me to live. This is not easy. Oh, give me grace. Give me help. And you keep running to that altar. I don't care how many times you mess up. Keep running to God. Keep running to the altar over and over until you get it right. Until you grow in the grace of God. Until you grow grow in that power that he's made available unto you. Through what Christ has done on that cross. You keep running to him. So that you won't have to be in the middle of the road. Which is not acceptable, acceptable unto Christ. Until he gives me grace. I'm on God's side. That's who I want to serve. That's who I want to know. God is a jealous God. But that being said, let's go to another scripture I want to I go to. I'll be closing very soon. Don't tune out just yet. Go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Matthew 22, verse 37. And also this video will be posted on my YouTube channel, so you can always go back to it and watch it. But I want you to tune in with me, and I want you to know what God requires of us. And Matthew 22, verse 37 says, Jesus said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God. What does it mean to love him? To be deeply committed and connected to somebody. I'm connected. I'm deeply committed. I'm deeply connected to Christ. No matter what I face in life, I'm committed to him. That's what true love is. It's unconditional love towards Christ. I don't love Christ just on the little things that he does for me. What if he chose not to give you what you desire? Can you still love him? Can you still serve him wholeheartedly? Come on. What if you don't marry the one that you wanted to marry? What if you don't get married at the age that you want to get married? What if God said, I don't don't want you to get married until you turn 35 and your goal was 30. Lord, well, if that's your will, that's what I want. Because if, if that's God's will and I love him, I line my life up with that. I line my life up with the will of God. With the will of God. And this verse says, Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Not some of it, not half heartedly. With all your heart, with all your soul, which is your, which is your emotions and your intellect and your will, your desires. That's your soul. So the Bible says to love him with all of your heart, your innermost being, to love him with all of your soul. And with all of your mind, that's your intellect, your mind, my thought, my mind, my thoughts must be submitted to the will of God. The Bible says to have the mind of Christ. Everything is all totally based upon who we serve and that's Jesus. Choose Jesus. Choose whom you will serve. Again, 
you only have a choice. One choice. Can't have both. Got to choose. I choose Jesus over anything, y'all. I choose Jesus over money. I choose Jesus over sex. I choose Jesus over marriage and all these other desires that we have in us that, that necessarily that God may not have for us at the moment. I choose him. I choose his will. Whatever, whatever he wants, you give him that. And I promise you, you'll always come out in victory. You'll always come out in success. Just fulfill his purpose, his destiny. And verse 38 says, this is the first and the great command. The first commandment and the greatest commandment out of all the commandments that God has ever given us in this, in, in this Bible is to love him. Just love him. And if you love him, the second greatest commandment is to love people. If you're truly committed and dedicated to Christ, you shouldn't treat people any kind of way. But if I'm totally committed to God and I'm on his side, I'm on the right side, I'm on the holy side, I'm on the righteous side, I'm on the godly side, I got to walk in love towards people. I got to walk in love. Those are the greatest two commandments. Number one, to love God. Number two is to love people. If you can, if you can walk in those two greatest commandments that, that Jesus gave the disciples and that God gave them also in the Old Testament under the law of Moses, you've come, the Bible said that you have fulfilled the whole law, the whole book you have already walked in. If you can love God, love people. Love God, love people. I love them with all my soul. I love them with all my heart. I love them with all my mind. I love them with all my strength. All your energy. Don't spend all your energy on the internet all the time. Don't spend all your energy always doing everything else and just working and all and sleeping and doing whatever you desire to do. Not necessarily saying those things are sin, sins, but I never put those things before God. My God comes first. I, again, I start off in prayer. I start off with this word. I start off with consecration whenever he leads me to go on the fast. Come on, somebody. In Jesus' name. And with that being said, let's go uh, to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse, thir verse 13 through 14. It talks about how it talks about how the Bible has called us to fear God and keep his commandments. It says the whole, the whole, the whole duty of man, the whole purpose of why you're living is to fear God. That means to reverence him. To respect him in everything that I do, what I'm texting on my phone, what I'm what I'm looking at on Facebook, whatever you do with your time. I got to make sure that if, if I know that God won't look at it, I need to make sure that I'm not looking at it. Not saying that we're going to be perfect, but I'm striving for this, y'all. We're striving for this. Don't give up on your salvation with Christ. It's not worth to serve the world. I'm, I'm here to serve Christ. I'm here to serve him. You got to get this. There is no middle ground. You can't have both. I must choose. And I choose Christ. I choose Christ. And with that being said, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let's read this very quickly. I'm getting ready to close. Don't go yet. I'm getting ready to close. It says, where we at? Where we at? Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus. It says, let us hear the the conclusion of the whole matter, the whole matter of life, what we're facing in life, whatever the case may be. Let us hear the whole conclusion. Let us understand that we must fear God and keep. That means every day I'm keeping. It's not a one day thing. No, every day you must keep the commandment of God and keep his commandments. What is his commandment? Whatever he has told us to do in the book, you got to obey it. Whatever he said, ask him for strength. God, help me to line my life up with this book. God, I'm falling short. Lord, I'm weak. Lord, I'm battling. Lord, I'm struggling in between wanting to serve the world and wanting to serve Christ. God, help me. <laughs> he can help you. You ain't got to be ashamed. Just lay it on the feet. Just lay it at the feet of Jesus. Lay it on the feet. Of, lay, lay, it on the, lay it on the cross. Say, Lord, help me to get it right. God, I want to be like you. God, I want to fulfill your purpose, your destiny, your will. I want to surrender my all to you. God, help me to live this life. Give me your grace that, bleed, that brings pleasure to you. That's the purpose. That's the will. That is what God wants from us. And then it says, for this is present tense. 
This is, this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty of man. The whole duty of man is to serve God, is to fear God, is to reverence him, respect him, honor him and everything that I do. And to keep all of his commandments. This is the whole purpose. And with that being said, let's go to our last script, our last two scriptures. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. It says, enter you in at the straight gate, a way that is focused. That's the straight gate. A way, the, 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 the straight gate is looking towards heaven. It's the way of focus. It's the way of focus. That is my focus. It's Jesus. It's heaven. My, no, it's all him. That's the straight gate. It says, enter into that straight gate. Strive into that straight gate. Give me your best shot every day. Every day I'm trying to. Get, I'm, I'm trying to set my focus, set my gaze upon the straight gate. And it says, for wide is the way and broad is the way that leads to destruction. But then it says, and many there be that find that road that is easy. Find the, the, the road of the world, the broad way, the easy way. That's the world that leads you. That's the, that's the road that leads you to hell. But the same, but the next verse says, it says, because straight is the gate, straight, and narrow is the way, hard is the way, challenging is the way. It's not going to be easy to go to heaven. Again, we're striving for this. Is it easy to go to college? No. So why would it be easy to serve God? No, it's supposed to be a challenge because we have to fulfill, we have to show him that we're worthy of the kingdom of God. We're showing them that we're worthy of the kingdom. And it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life. The narrow way, the, the challenging way that leads to heaven where we all desire to go. And it says, and few that be that find it. Many people find the bad road, the wrong road. But very few people find the straight gate, find the road to heaven. And you, let me say this. Let you be in the few. Don't be in the broad. Don't be in the many. I don't want to be with the big crowd. Put me with the small crowd that's after Jesus. That's on fire for God. That's going to actually help me get to, 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 to in my word, in prayer. Those are the people that I want around me. Who wants to go to heaven? Who wants to go to heaven? That's who I want to be around. If you want to go, go do what the world do, you go that way. I'm going this way. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going all the way with God, especially in the times that we're living in. And I'm getting ready to close, especially in the times that we're living in. You cannot afford to go to the left. No, I'm going on God's side. I'm going straight or I'm going to the right side. The right side is always consisted of going towards on, on, on Christ's side. And our last verse, Matthew chapter six, verse thirty three. Matthew chapter 6, let me say this. Keep a no, a no compromising status. Keep a no compromise status. Don't, don't compromise for the world. Don't compromise for your friends. I'm not trying to please my friends. I don't like them like that. I love them. But no, God comes first. I don't care what they think. I don't care how they feel. I don't care about none of that. No, God comes first. Anything that they say or do that is contrary to the word of God, you got to go. I love you. But you got to go. Until you choose to get it right, we can't be around each other. Because I don't want you to tear me down. I want you to build me up. I want you to strengthen me. And I should. And, and your standard should be the same thing as well. Let me build you up. If I'm not building you up, don't watch me. Don't follow me. I must be building you and your relationship, relationship up with Christ. Those are the people you want around you. And if you don't have them around you, you might want to do some thinking tonight. You might want to change some things. We got to totally yield ourselves to Christ. Again, there is no middle ground. We must choose who we're going to serve. And Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Put God as, as priority in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is his righteousness? His righteousness is doing things God's way. Whatever way God would do it. That's the way I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. That's righteousness. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
And all these things shall be added. Wealth will be added. Increase will be added. Deliverance will be added. Breakthrough will be added. Joy will be added. Peace will be added. The fruits of the Spirit will be added. Love, patience, temperance, self-control. Whatever you need from God, He says that if you can put me first, I'll take care of, I'll take care of everything else for you. But I have to be first. And His righteousness. And all these things shall be added. God is a God of multiplication. He's a God of addition. He wants to add to our lives and not take away. Unless it's something that is not of Him, He'll take that away. And then the next verse says, Take therefore no thought for your life. I close the book. Take no thought for your life. Whatever the will of God is, whatever you're battling with, put it on the altar. And with that being said, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that I've had to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father God, I pray that you will strengthen them, that you will empower them, that you will give them grace, give them your ability, Father, to serve you wholeheartedly, God, to go all the way. Help them, deliver them, bring breakthrough, bring deliverance, bring killing, bring salvation, God, bring restoration. Those who was, those who was with you and they're not with you anymore or they're battling, God, if they have been lukewarm, God, we don't want you to spit them out. Lord, have mercy on them, God. I speak the spirit of restoration in their lives in the name of Jesus. Give them strength. Give them empowerment. Give them grace. Give them power. Strength. Give them a desire for the word of God. Give them a desire for fasting, for consecration. Give them a desire for prayer. God, help all of us. Help me to live this life. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And I also want to say that the one that's playing the keyboard for me tonight is my brother, Brian Kohler. And um, his uh, Instagram is at David underscore Samson. That Samson is S-A-M-S-O-O-N. If you want to tune in to him on there, you can go on there. He also has Christian rap music. If you like Christian rap music, he got Christian rap music. Um, on iTunes, um, you can find him up by typing in David Sampson. That Sampson is spelled S-A-M-S-O-N, the regular Sampson. So again, um, on Instagram at David underscore Sampson with two O's. And on iTunes, David Sampson with one O. And um, be encouraged, be empowered. Thank you for tuning in. If you all want to um, tune in and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, you're able to do that. At youtube.com slash talking with Nate. That's N-A-T-E. Um, you can join me on there. You can join me on Instagram at talking with Nate. You can join me on Facebook. If you don't, if you're not really on here as a friend with me on Facebook, join with me. We all trying to go to heaven, y'all. That's all. So I'm with you, you with me. We brothers and sisters in Christ. So you strengthen me, and I strengthen you. Iron, sharpen iron. And like I like to always end all of my videos, stay in faith, stay in faith, stay in faith. And I see you guys next time. God bless you.